Welcome to the Undisrupted Podcast. I'm Carl, and Adam, I have a question for you. As a tech leader, you've been a tech leader for, uh, man, longer than a decade, I think, right? I mean, you and I both yeah. kind, of, kind of gone through it. I'm sure, I am absolutely sure, at some point, there was something that happened to you that was just like, that is just a pet peeve. Like, there is a thing that happens, and maybe it's something that happens repeatedly as a tech leader, mm. that you're like, man, that gets me every time it happens. So, don't name any names. This is going to be safe. <laughs> this is a safe space. But go ahead and... Tell us what's your what was your pet peeve? What's one of your pet peeves as a tech leader? Gosh, I, I can tell you that pretty simple. It's going to be that uh, a principal who, at some point in a former life, did something with technology, instructional technology, or whatever the case may be, and they want to try to tell me how to do my job or how to troubleshoot whatever's going on in their building or whatever it is may be. It's like, all right, dude, I got you. <laughs> But how about you run your school and let me run technology? You know? <laughs> there we go. You just need to flip. You need to flip it on them and say, like, listen. And here's how you be a principal better. And then, yeah. <laughs> but it's one of those things where it's pretty cool. It's like, you know, we definitely want to have that relationship where it's back and forth and, and give me some ideas how to support your building and things of that nature. But it goes a little too far when they're trying to tell you where you need to put an access point uh, in the school. It's like you, you don't understand how, what we got going on here, sir. Uh, you know. <laughs> mine, mine, mine goes back way before I even became an administrator. I was actually a teacher. I was a tech lead as a teacher in a, in a school here. And uh, there was a second grade teacher. I was teaching first grade. And there was a there was this year right at the very end, my last year of teaching where this teacher would come in about every other day. And she would go, can you just I'm going to read a story to your class. Can you just go fix my PowerPoint for me? Because I can't seem to get it to work. And I and I swear that year I won teacher of the year. And I have no idea how because I swear I was out of my classroom almost half the half the year. But it happens that way. So uh, let me bring in our guest here. This is Eugene Anderson. He is the tech director of Troy City Schools right there in Alabama. All right, Eugene, what, where, what's your two cents? Like, what's your pet peeve? Go ahead, lay it on us. <laughs> well, uh, I'm glad to be here. And if I had to have a pet peeve, which I have many of those, um, <laughs> as a tech director, I hate to hear the words, can I borrow five minutes of your time? <laughs> oh, only yes. Five yes. Minutes. It's never five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you don't understand the, <laughs> when I hear that and how I cringe. And you, you can see it in my smile when or you, you grit your teeth like when you hear, uh, it's only going to take five minutes. Can you just come in here? And then 30 minutes later, you know, you finally, hopefully, solved their problem. Or a lot of times you did not solve their problem. It could have been sent in the help desk. And then now you just basically wasted your time as what you had going on for the rest of that day. So yeah. anything you had on there for your support that you was going to do or if there was an administrator that you was going to speak to for that particular day, it's gone because of that five minutes. So that's that would be my main pet peeve that I have. Let's even talk about the word borrow. <laughs> if I'm borrowing something, that means I'm going to give it back to you. <laughs> yes, yeah, don't get it and back. Very rarely are the people who's borrowing those five minutes are in a position to ever give you back five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Or the, I'm, I'm sorry to bother you. Yes. yes. <laughs> we hear that a lot. Like One quick I'm, second. Yeah, just uh, <laughs> it's like when someone says, uh, "No offense," <laughs> but uh, <laughs> and then what I'm about to tell you is very offensive. Um, so uh, that balance is tricky. So I'm going to start us off with this kind of our first kind of serious, not so serious question. So I noticed uh, I was checking out your profile, Eugene, and I noticed you're a seesaw ambassador. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, so let me ask you this: This is our serious, not so serious question. What was the ask the last time you actually were physically on a seesaw? <laughs> This uh, good. That's a great question. Thank you. Uh, before the pandemic, actually, because oh. I actually take my uh, my my children to um, our local uh, uh, recreation department, and they actually have a playground. And at times, they do not believe that Daddy could play on the seesaw with them and have all three of them on one side, and I can lift them. <laughs> on the side. So. To answer your question sometime back in January. <laughs> wow. So you, you are someone who not only is an ambassador, but you model it too. You model the behavior. Yeah, I like you that. you got to model how to use the seesaw. True leadership right there. He's a model seesaw ambassador. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool that you, you know, you're, you're taking time to do those things because you, you have to find things to do with your day. But we all are supposed to sleep at night. But in our jobs, there are things that keep us up at night especially yeah. with what we're going through right now. So if you don't mind sharing one thing, that big thing that keeps you up at night. Oh, uh, that's really good. Um, so what keeps me up at night? Because I do stay up 
quite often, um, just figure, trying to figure things out. And for me, it would be um, if my administrators, since I know we kind of spoke on them, if they're prepared mm -hmm. with what's going on in today's time, because I know there's so much that they have on their plate. And as a tech director who uh, my focus has always been to make certain that the instructional leaders are the models in their classroom, I mean, in, in their uh, schools to help their teachers. Now that we're in this new norm or whatever you want to call it, then I just, I just, I just hope that um, at night I always think, okay, did they listen to me when the last time we had the administrative meeting, did they understand what I told them about what ed tech tools we could possibly look at, what technology we should be trying to push out to our students. And so that's always something that keeps me up at night. And I feel like with uh, you're hitting on the leadership there, and I think the campus leadership is, I, they are kind of the, the magical, I guess, the magical beans or whatever to make things grow right when it comes to school. So if you have those leaders that are really on board with you and your belief, and you guys are all kind of speaking the same message, it helps your department. So if you have, when, when you encounter, let's say, a leader who doesn't quite get it or a reluctant leader, what are some strategies or what are some things you've used in the past to kind of say, all right, I'm going to try to help them understand you know, what it is that I can do to help them or, and on occasion we have to say no, right. As tech leaders. So maybe uh, what are some techniques you use to say like, well, this is why we can't do it, but maybe here's a different idea. Is there a strategy or something you use for that? Yes. So that, that's, you know, I believe that one-on-one -on -one time is very critical with uh, myself and those particular administrators, you know, because of course there are a lot of things that they're not going to say, I guess you could say publicly in front of other administrators. So if there's something that they don't understand or they want to do, you know, I normally tell them, hey, let's let's talk about this at another time. And for them, that's cold word. You, John, really needs to talk to us about this situation. <laughs> so either he's going to tell us yes, no, but I think by now they understand the good thing about you, John, is he is not going to give us a no without a reason or a solution to help. So so that's basically what I the way I try to go about doing this is I want to reach out to that particular person in an administrative meeting you know, hey, let's let's discuss this further. And then, of course, we go sit down and then we have that conversation. And of course, I do come with those answers of, yes, it can work, but let's look at this solution. And of course, the solution is also going to be something that can benefit the entire school system, not just what they're looking for. But that's that's what I try to do. It sounds like you're almost a combination of a principal and a counselor to them, too, because you're like, OK, yeah. <laughs> let, let, let's go to my office for a minute and talk about yeah. this. But also, you're you're trying to help them understand it and and a lot of times, again, those are the people, those are your people out there on the on the front lines that really need to help with the teachers and get the, get everybody on board with your district message. So that's a good answer. Yeah, thanks. And I guess kind of staying with that leadership um, question that we were just out there, in, in your role, what do you think is the, the most important thing to kind of model to support your staff with the things that are going on right now? Because I'm sure they have tons of questions like, you know, how are we going to service people's machines? Are we going to touch them? Um, how are we going to give uh, that end user support? So, you know, what are things that you're doing to kind of model a sense of calmness to your team to kind of get them prepared for however they're going to support their end users once we everything gets started? Yeah, so the great thing that, that I think that we're doing right now is um, as far as how we model, I also tell them that I model myself. So like, for instance, I look at what other systems are doing and how can it compare to what we currently have in place. And so based on that information, based on that feedback that I get from other local tech directors, then I am able to tell our leaders that, hey, um, I know that we haven't tried this just yet, but I've seen that this particular project or whatever may have worked in another school system. They're comparable to us. So let's see how it works in our school system. And then with that being said, because I am able to model behind a particular tech director or another school, then it's okay that you follow behind me. And then I think that's the process that we're trying to follow in our school system. So now we have administrators who are uh, taking my word for it. And now they're looking at different proposals and different things to bring into the, to the schools. And I'm glad that you mentioned that because those are the questions that administrators bring up. Who touches the technology? Uh, how far, how often are the support that we're going to give? Are we going to give support to parents? And the answer, of course, to all of that is yes. It's just, it's, it's how we have to do it because in, in our system, we are a smaller school system, so we don't have many people that could do many things, but it's, it's all going to be a community-based effort. And so if you just believe in 
what we're trying to do from our perspective, then I think that the teachers will believe in you as an administrator and what you're trying to direct and give to them as yeah. far as this, this is hard. That's so big because as you mentioned, you know, we have to have our professional learning through our peers. You have to have our PLN. I know during this time period, there's been uh, numerous virtual learning sessions, whether it was through Future Ready Tech Leaders um, had a, a day where there was multiple breakout sessions. I know Tech and Learning has uh, set up a few things and RTM. So a lot of these groups have set up a lot of these sessions where tech leaders, because the great thing is we're all figuring this out at the same time. Yeah, it's, we are. It's, <laughs> it's one of those things where before one district was doing something totally different than another one. We all have the same problem and we all can mm -hmm. borrow from everybody's solutions. And as you mentioned, best fit for our district because I have 20,000 students in my district but your district is approximately how big? Yeah, so we roughly have 2,000 students. Yeah, but some of the solutions that are working in my district may work with yours at a, at a different scale and vice versa. Yes, and I definitely agree with that. And, and, and that's why I try to follow that model uh, because we don't have one, of course, you know, you don't have all the answers where you are right now currently, but there are some people who are, have done it before you. So let's just see what they have to offer and then let's bring it in and how can it structure it for us to make make it make sense. And, th and that's why I like to, to go with that approach. So on occasion, there may be a times where you'll encounter staff or um, administrators that just don't really want to, maybe not want to learn, right? They're just like, you know mm -hmm. what? I'm just, I don't want to have this. I don't, I, especially with, I feel like technology, it's it's almost like art. There's many people that say that like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not an artist. I'm just not an artist, right? Cause they just, or I'm not creative or something like that. And with technology, I see people all the time say, well, I'm just not a tech person, right? So how do you help someone like that? How do you help someone overcome that kind of that ability that, that doesn't, that reluctancy to learn something new? Well, so the, so the first thing I know I, I try to do is just, and I think this is more of a personality type deal where I, I want to let them know that um, everyone has to start somewhere with uh, technology, whether or not it's education technology or it's just even the understanding of the devices that you are currently using. And so we all have to start somewhere. And then I try my best to make them feel at ease with what we are trying to do. And there's no such thing as somebody who is, you know, tech illiterate or, you know, I even have something to say I'm, I'm tech dumb and I just don't know it. So try my best to make them feel at ease because I tell them there are some things that I don't know. And, and, and if I don't know it, of course, I'm going to Google it and I'm going to tell you that I don't know it and I'm going to try to find the answer. And so if we could build that relationship as tech directors with our administrators and teachers, then I think that makes them feel at ease. And so now, let's look at challenging you to use certain digital tools or certain devices that will help you in your classroom. And so that's the way I kind of go about doing that. It's a modeling again, it's back to that modeling yes. effort, right? Like, let's talk about how do we model that growth? And I like that you, a lot of times I feel like people in our positions are given, uh, made to feel like we have to have every single answer. And so just by simple, doing something simple, like you were saying there saying, you know what, I'm not sure about that. I'm gonna Google that and check that out and I'll get right back to you mm -hmm. on that. I think a lot of times people are like, okay, well, so he doesn't have all the answers either, but maybe I can go out and find these on my own too. I like that, that uh, strategy for modeling. All right. We're, we're going to take it a little funny right here. Um, uh -oh. I'm going to throw you a curveball. Uh -oh, uh -oh. <laughs> so, not in so the notes, so I don't know what he's right, doing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so with that question, you know, give us like a, a quick 60-second uh, uh, story. Now, I want you to change the name to protect the innocent uh, of sometime when you were trying to teach somebody something or they just had a question that was just so like off the wall that you had to stop for a minute and look off to say, am I being punked right now? <laughs> Once again, protect the innocence. No names. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, so we got to do some Susie Joes and some, um, yeah. uh, some Mary Beths. <laughs> Ooh, wow, that's, that's a good one, because that's, that's, a, that's a heavy, I can't believe that you said that, but I have to try my best to say that was a good question. And so I had to learn how to say that all the time. Like, that's a great question. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Adam, for doing this. You're going to get me in trouble. So, yeah. So, Susie Jo. Um, I, I, I think normally what happens in that type of situation is when we are doing a professional learning opportunity. Uh, and, of course, you go over everything that from, from A to Z and probably further than that of how this works. And when you're done, you get that last question of, hey, um, 
And then, of course, they just go and rattle along. They just ask, like, I didn't understand that. Or they ask you a question that was already answered. And then you're trying to figure out, okay, were they paying attention to me? Did, <laughs> I, I could have sworn that I uh, I said that. And then yeah. besides that, the slide presentation is right behind me and the answer <laughs> is, right is, is up there. But that's a great question. So yeah. we're going to... Uh... <laughs> You're good. You're better than me. You can put on that face. That's good. I can't do that. <laughs> I, I get a lot of those. And, and now in, in this new world, uh, we're having to uh, you know consistently um, reach out to people via email or whatnot. Um, how many times have I... Um, typed out an email, deleted it, and then started back over yep. and said, yes, sure, I would glad to help you, even <laughs> though I've sent this information to you 15 or 20 times. Yeah, so so thank you, Adam. Um, hopefully, uh, you're hiring. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, tell you, I had one of those. We were doing some training, and um, I, I think it was probably on some preview board software, and I was telling them, okay, if you hit F7, it's a spell check feature. And everybody was like, you know, the class, oh, yeah, F7, great. And now you're like, oh, it's not working. And I was like, well, this is F7. She's like, I'm hitting F7, F7. No, no. F and oh, no. I started <laughs> tapping F and 7 on the on the keyboard. And then I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. It's, it's those buttons at the top, the function key. But then she tried to put it on me. Well, you need to make sure you're clear with your directions. <laughs> My favorite was when we uh, we gave Mac MacBooks to our staff a few years ago, and we had had iPads for several years, and it and it happens to me too, so it's fun. But when you first do that first MacBook training, it's because their screens look so similar to iPad screens, and they have the keyboards. I don't know how many teachers are going. For some reason, this this isn't working. I'm dragging my fingers like it's not a touch screen; it's a laptop. <laughs> but I do it yeah. too, so I can't blame yeah. them. Like I see fingerprints all over my screen. It's like, oh yeah, I forget this isn't touch screen, right? Oh yeah. yeah. We get you know, that with the Chromebook. That's that ultra retina display, you know, it's yeah. so clear. Yes. <laughs> just want to touch it. Yes. <laughs> all right, so um, here's a question that I have for you. Uh, with all the things going on, we, we try to ask our guests to give some encouragement to people that are going to be listening to this podcast mm -hmm. because there's so many things out there to keep us off-centered and disrupt our world. So uh, what can you say to people to keep them um, undisrupted? Oh, yes. Uh, just stay in there. Um, we, we all don't have the answers. And so uh, I, I think that in this opportunity right here, we all are learning from each other. I, I need you just like you need me in this situation. And, and that's what I am trying to tell our teachers, our administrators, even our community members. Like we need your input on what we're doing. And so I, I just want to encourage everyone out there just to understand that we are all in this together. And we are trying to make the best decisions that that are that are given to us first, and then we're going to try to make that decision based on um, the needs of what the community has, and then of course, based on the needs that we have in our own school system. And so, just understand that. And so, um, we just have to move slowly with this situation. Um, is is uh, we're going to continue to learn as we move forward with this and. Uh, patience is very key and I'm, I'm saying that right now but I'm also saying that to myself because <laughs> <laughs> I am working on my own patience so I do believe that patience is going to be key in this situation and so just please when things don't work so let's say everybody start school in September and we go virtual there are going to be some kinks that we have to work out so just please just be patient with us as we're going through this process together that's great words. I mean, I'm sure that those words of wisdom also helped you during your time at ASU. Um, <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Alabama State, because uh, being a Tuskegee person, we didn't have to have patience because we just always beat Alabama State. But that's a, uh, that's another podcast hey, hey, hey. for another day. <laughs> well, at least I get to say, Adam, that you you guys did uh, cancel the game first. Um, did <laughs> they were scared. They didn't want to play y'all. Pa yeah. Pandemic or not, you guys did cancel on us. So we're going to count this as a win. Uh, <laughs> I love that. That's great. Uh, well, uh, Yujan, how can people find you and learn more about you and where and your work? Uh, how can they follow you? Where, where are you at on Twitter? What's your socials? Yeah, so please follow me on Twitter at Yujun underscore Anderson. And I know my name could be problematic at times. So hopefully uh, you guys have it on this podcast. It'll be on the podcast. Yep. Okay, but Yujun underscore Anderson. And my website is www.yujunanderson.com. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Yujun. 
Thank you, God. All right, everybody. This has been the Undisrupted Podcast brought to you by Future Ready Schools. He's Adam. And he's Carl. Remember, we're better together. And we're better undisrupted. undisrupted. This podcast is made possible by the generous support of Amazon Web Services.